This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM 560. The Answer. Good morning, Dan and Amy, and uh, I'm sure you've heard the ads. We've discussed them. The Republican race for governor between State Representative Jeannie Ives and Bruce Rauner. Bruce Rauner's got a million-dollar-plus buy this week uh, on the networks, cable, radio. You've heard him on this station, the ads. The uh, argument that uh, Jeannie Ives is Madigan's favorite Republican, which you would have to be uh, blithely ignorant or lacking in self-respect to believe if you're an Illinois Republican. And that's not me saying that. That's uh, a number of the leading conservative reform state legislators who've endorsed Jeannie Ives saying it in a letter they released yesterday calling on Rauner to stop, I'm quoting, to stop his shameful distortions and fabrications of Jeannie Ives' record. He can't defend his own policies, so he's using deep campaign coffers to flood airwaves and mailboxes with bogus attacks. Mike Madigan's favorite candidate? Question mark. It's Bruce Rauner who enacted key elements of the progressive social agenda, including taxpayer taxpayer funding of elective abortions. It's Bruce Rauner who signaled he'd accept an income tax increase paired with reforms that never materialized. And it's Bruce Rauner who just proposed a new budget that relies on those taxes to balance spending rather than proposing cuts. Uh, that's Tom Morrison saying that, rep- conservative from Palatine. John Cabello, conservative from Rockford, also Trump's Illinois state director in 2016, John Cabello. Margo McDermott, conservative from Will County. David McSweeney, conservative from uh, Barrington area, uh, Northwest Cook and Lake County. Alan Skillicorn from Kane and McHenry counties. Tim Bivens out Dixon Way, Senator Kyle, McCor- Senator Kyle McCarter down Metro East near St. Louis. These are the leading conservative legislators in the General Assembly who've actually worked with Gene Ives and Bruce Rauner. So they can kind of separate the wheat from the chaff. So what what say you to that, Governor? Are all of these legislators, are they Mike Madigan's favorite Republicans, too? What say you, Bruce Rauner supporters? Oh, uh, you know they're not going to call in, but you could always throw the number out anyway. Yeah, 312-642-5600, turnkey.pro insulin. I'm still waiting for Bruce Rauner support. Look, I'll, I'll give you the floor, and, and, and then I'll decimate you like Jeannie Ives decimated Bruce Rauner before the Tribune editorial board. But you can have your say. But you just have nothing to say, I know, because you're just voting for a checkbook, and you know it. And you're countenancing betrayals, a, a traitor in, the, in, in our midst, and you know it. So what are you going to say? What are you going to say? Jeannie Ives and Tom Morrison and John Cabello and Peter Breen and Margaret McDermott and David McSweeney and Alan Skillicorn and Tim Bivens and Kyle McCarter, they're the cabal, the conservative reformers? Kyle McCarter is the first politician, I I think, in the history of Western civilization who actually abided his own self-imposed term limits. He's not running again this cycle because he actually believes in so much in term limits, he's willing to apply them to himself. But he's part of the Madigan cabal down there, St. Louis way. There's no credible case to be made. Is there? Well, for more on this topic and other substantive issues, we're pleased to be joined by the aforesaid state representative, Jeannie Ives, conservative Republican candidate for governor. Jeannie, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Well, thanks for giving me the opportunity to set the record straight. So um, so let's talk about, I mean, you've heard from your colleagues, mm-hmm. and so that, that speaks volume about the veracity of what Ron oh, was saying. One little, yeah, one um, little data point that on, though. I was just at a, another function on Sunday morning, and Mark Batnick and David Welter and even Darlene Sanger stood up there and said there's no truth to any of that. There's Mark, no way that she's Mike Madigan's best bestie down there. Mark Batnick. All three of them. Mark Batnick is a state rep from Plainfield, Republican. Uh, David Welter is a state representative from Grundy County. And uh, Darlene Sanger is a former state representative from Naperville, now running on Ronner's statewide ticket for mm-hmm. Comptroller. But, Dan, here's the problem. Every single one of those 73 sitting state uh, Republican state legislators down there ought to be saying the same thing. Where, where are their voices? Because this now is, is very personal. This is my record. He lied to the Cardinal. He lied to our caucus. He lied to the public. But he's specifically lying about my record as a tax fighter. And everybody knows that's exactly why I went to Springfield was to defend taxpayers. That's how I lead every speech because it's the truth. So, Jeannie, the first time you saw that commercial, did you fall off your chair or off the couch? 
Because even my well, Democratic really friends know that. TV. Yeah, but, yeah, I didn't really watch much TV, so I, I heard about it before I saw it, and, and, and nobody believed it. And, no. and even the Democrats are just laughing hysterically because they all know it's not true either. Uh, well, address, though, this, you know, one thing is just because p- for people that are generally uh, uninformed but are trying to be informed and they don't understand the commercial and the bites that uh, were uh, selected that to try and paint you in that light of being some kind of flack for Madigan, um, bites from your joint appearance before the Tribune editorial board. So just provide some context for our listeners about those bites that were selected so that they have an understanding of what Ronner's doing here. Well, well, sure. So um, in, during the trip editorial board, uh, all Bruce Donner could say was, you know, it's Mike Madigan's fault. Everything was a blame shift. And he wanted to he, he wanted to pretend that the entire last three years had nothing to do with his failed leadership. It was all Mike Madigan's fault. All Mike Madigan's. I got tired of hearing it. And, and so I made a couple points because the other question is, well, are you going to be able to fight Mike Madigan like Rauner did? Well, yeah, absolutely. I've already stood up to Mike Madigan. I've already defeated Bills on the House floor with him sitting there. And so, uh, look, Mike Madigan's. I've also made the comment Mike Madigan voted for my bill. So apparently when the policy, you know, that I can do something with this guy, I can either argue against him or at least he understands some of my policies good. What, but the what, other bite what, what, came what, what, from what, 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 what was the policy that he voted for, just so we're on, you know, on point? What, oh, sure. What, yeah. Well, it was a uh, far-reaching debt transparency act that dealt with school districts. And even the staffer came up to me afterwards and said, I'm shocked Mike Madigan voted for your bill. That may be the first time ever. So the like, po- oh, okay, good. Maybe he thinks that schools are out of control. Well, so the point Whatever, is— he voted for my bill. The point is to say that the idea is you're to, you're to you know, bend people to your policy agenda— rather than selling out to advance theirs, and that, I suppose, is the difference. Well, it's, it's absolutely the difference. And then when he was blame-shifting to Mike Madigan, I basically said, well, uh, you know, it doesn't help to just make a, have a personal attack against him. There you go again, you know, That's how calling that, Mike yeah. Madigan names. I've seen well, reporters you know, my whole that life doesn't take go, things that, out of you know, are we? Yeah, it's just a bullying tactic. All right, so speaking of Mike Madigan, uh, in the past week, not one but two of his aides have been uh, let go or forced to resign because of their bad behavior. Um, what do you think should happen to Mike Madigan? Because if there's any other politician, I think he'd already have been forced to step down from his leadership role, but it's Mike Madigan. Yes, at a minimum, and I called for him to also just resign. He, d- he just needs to resign at this point. He, he, if, first of all, not having a legislative inspector general for three years and knowing that there's 27 complaints sitting there, the guy is complicit in all the sexual harassment cases that have gone on down there. He's not interested in, in changing anything in the state, and specifically on this topic. So I don't know why every single um, Democrat uh, female legislator isn't down there uh, calling for his resignation, too, mm-hmm. if they really believe in this cause. So he should resign. And, Absolutely. And you've called for him to resign. Uh, Ronner, to my knowledge, the Republican legislative leaders, to my knowledge, have not. No, but, you know, think about this. My, uh, Bruce Rauner hasn't even called for the Auditor General, uh, Frank Martina, to resign. He was a hand-picked person by Mike Madigan. He's unqualified for the position, and not to mention he's under federal investigation. So um, I opposed the Martino appointment. I was the first to call for Martino to resign, and we can't get our Republican governor to do the same when he's Mike Madigan's uh First in command and now new auditor general in charge of, you know, checking the accounts for, on taxpayers' behalf. No, it's you, ridiculous. You used to be a Ronner supporter, correct, when he first ran, and now you're running against him. And just tell us why. Well, he's you can't trust Bruce Ronner anymore. He, he lied to the Cardinal. He lied to our caucus. Nobody trusts him. The lobbyists don't trust him. Not that I care too much about them, yeah. but uh, you can't do any deals with him. You can't make any policy go forward because you don't know where he's going to come from at the next turn and what he's going to cave on. So nobody trusts my uh, trust Bruce Rauner. Uh, the, the policies he put in place are a complete violation of the Republican platform. So I, I go to Republican events and I say, what are we about? Mm-hmm. Pizza and beer and a social club? Are we here to get something done? Are we here to advance a conservative reform agenda because Bruce Rauner at the top of the ticket isn't doing it? Mm-hmm. And so if you want to call yourself a Republican, you can't vote for him. Well, how are you being received uh, around the state? Because I imagine you're traveling everywhere. Very well. (laughs) Very well. Standing ovation last night at a women business meeting in um, Peoria. 
the night before at York Township, York Township, which is where, you know, there's quite a few uh, establishment Republicans supporting Rauner, but I was right in the middle of their York Township, standing ovation after my speech, you know, uh, standing ovation down in um, um, down in uh, Jerseyville, you know, which is far east side or west side of the state. So standing ovations everywhere I go when I talk to Republican audiences about what's going on. This week, uh, one of the things you talked about what's going on was the uh, fourth confirmed case of Legionnaires at the Illinois Veterans Home in Quincy uh, just uh, a few weeks after Governor Rauner's stunt of staying there for a couple nights, just a a week after his appearance or or about a week after his appearance before the Cranes editorial board when where he was asked if he would do anything different in terms of how he's handled the Illinois Veterans Home in Quincy over the last two, two and a half years where 13 people have died and uh, there's 11 pending negligence lawsuits against the state. And now, after yet another declaration of a clean bill of health, four more cases of Legionnaire's disease, uh, you suggested that um, you would take a different tack with the Illinois Veterans Home if you were governor. What would that be? We would move them immediately out, out of those facilities. They have a systemic problem. You have a three-year crisis. And I went to the facilities, and I saw what the staff was doing and the protocols they're doing in terms of uh, heating the water and then cooling it back down right before it comes out of the faucet. I've seen the protocols on flushing that they're doing. I've seen the vet checks that they're doing, and it's still occurring. You have a three, you have a three-year history of it not being fixed. You have to move those people out. That's what, when I talked to a, a friend of mine who runs private nursing homes, that's exactly what he said he would have to do. Because in his case, he would be sold, sued for millions of dollars if there was even one death. Well, and, so, in Illinois, and, and we've had 13 deaths as related to this, and we haven't done enough. Move them out now. Well, so what, why, why haven't they moved? It seems like the obvious thing to do, the common sense thing to do. Why, why is it taking two and a half years and you know, this kind of body count? Well, obviously, uh, Buck stops at the top, so it's a failure of leadership. He doesn't want to. Uh, pretend that it's that big of a significant problem. I think you've got a little bit of an issue with uh, people are worried that you're going to close down the Quincy Veterans Home altogether, which is a huge job area, uh, job creation area for public sector workers down in Quincy. And I think that they're all concerned about that. Uh, But that shouldn't be our concern. Our concern could be, be that veterans are dying for something that is a preventable disease. It's preventable. Yeah. And it doesn't happen in other nursing homes all the time with the three-year crisis history of this. They would have been shut down by the state, and yet the state won't shut down its own facility. And Governor is the one who can make that call. Governor Rauner is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely, he can. I guess if he pretended he was in charge, he should have some authority. Of course, he can make that call. In addition to uh, the mail, uh, the uh, television commercials or some mailers too. Uh, the most recent one I've seen uh, suggests that to your four increasing property taxes in Illinois. In oh, Illinois. One, yeah. um, and, and my understanding is that uh, you're a proponent of the same thing I'm a proponent of, which is capping property taxes in the state at, at 1% of home value like Indiana does, which would be a massive property tax cut and uh, restore people's home equity if we were to pursue that reform. What, 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 where are you on property taxes? Absolutely. We don't need to freeze them at the highest level in the nation. We need to reduce them and we need to cap them so people can have a certainty that in the future they're not going to continue to rent their home from their local superintendent. This is outrageous. And, you know, this is another one of the the rounder lies that um, is it, just incredible. I'm the one who, who waves the paper on the floor saying, look, Mike Madigan um, actually is a person who represented – seven of the top 12 property sales in the city of Chicago, and they're underassessed. They're assessed only at 42% of their value. What's the problem here? I'm the one who called out Mike Madigan for the games he was playing on assessments long before Bruce Rauner got into this game, long before he said anything. And for him to say that I'm not, uh, you know, for property taxes uh, reduction is ridiculous. He's just lying. Yes. People know my record. Uh, yesterday we talked to uh, Anthony Napolitano, who, of course, is the uh, – 41st Ward Alderman in the city of Chicago, about this uh, new identification, muni identification card that Rahm Emanuel is promulgating for persons in this country illegally, for undocumented immigrants in Chicago, that would allow, that would be, a, that, that, that people could use to register to vote even though they're in this country illegally, thus the need for this muni card in the first place. 
it's rather curious. It was it's curious to uh, Napolitano and, and actually a handful of other aldermen, Democrats in the city, just a handful, unfortunately. Um, th- this strikes me as patently unconstitutional. Is there anything that can be done at the state level about this? Well, I've uh, just requested legislation be drafted to prevent this from occurring uh, and absolutely prevent it from being used for any sort of voter identification process. So it, it's just it's unreal. I mean, I don't think that I could go to Mexico and get a some sort of ID card from their local municipality. It, it, I don't know why we're doing this, but this is the lawlessness that you have from the Chicago Democrats and now Bruce Rauner when it comes to criminal illegal immigrants or illegal immigrants regardless. You know, so, um, you know, sanctuary state, let's take that one up. Every single Democrat candidate and Governor Rauner have the same position on sanctuary state. Every single one of them, they do not care about the rule of law. I'm the only candidate who does. She is Jeannie Ives, uh, Illinois State Representative from the 42nd out in the Western Burbs, Wheaton Way. Now a Republican candidate for governor challenging Bruce Rauner in the GOP primary on March 20th. Jeannie, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Thank you. And she joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. You've made this.